so so tonight uh, we're going to go into uh, three different books and kind of do some high level hillbilly correlation of learning stuff that uh, only people like us really seem to like to do that. Uh, but I mean, we encourage other people to read the stuff that we're reading too. And I think a lot of times it gets shared uh, with others on, on the Decoders of Truth. I share it, Matt shares it as well. So we're going to do something a little special tonight and go into kind of some of the deep uh, issues that come out of these really historic and wonderful books. And uh, so I'm really grateful that you three decided to read this stuff. And Jay's, Jay's a reading machine, so we, we have to really keep putting the books on the bedstead and keep up with them and take our star for our gold. So, <laughs> so the, first, the first issue that uh, comes up is out of Manly P. Hall's book. And we're going to go through and kind of connect some really uh, esoteric stuff for you that also has an impact on your lives here and now today in understanding the completeness of the teachings of the past and possibly some of the understandings that we've been able to derive, like with the holographic models and the Emerald Tablets and the Lost Teachings of Last. And so for me was this really profound revelation about who is the demi ergus This shows up on Manly P. Hall's book on page 57. The divine pymander Hermes Mercurius Trimes Gesserus is one of the earliest of the Hermetic writings now extant. While probably not in its original form, uh, it was modified uh, to be more of a dialogue. So let me just move down. The Divine Time Matter consists of 17 fragmentary writings gathered together and put forth as one work. And the second book is the one we're gonna focus on and it's called The Vision of Hermes. And this one is really, I don't know, this one affected me probably more than many other writings I think I've ever read. Uh, and I'll get you guys' input on this, but uh, in essence, um, Hermes is out meditating and has a out-of-body experience and has an encounter with what he calls Poimander. And I'm going to read you that section right here to give you the background for it. And then the stuff that comes out of this and, and the symbolism is so powerful because we see it all over the world. We saw it in the Chinese culture, we saw it in Mesopotamia and Egypt, and, the, and even in uh, Middle, uh, Middle Age Europe with the idea of a dragon. So listen to this. Hermes while wandering in a rocky and desolate place, gave himself over to meditation and prayer. Following the secret instructions of the temple, he gradually freed the temple, I believe he's talking about is the Atlantean temple, where he learned this. He gradually freed his higher consciousness from the bondage of his bodily senses, and thus released his divine nature, revealed to him the mysteries of the transcendental spheres. He beheld a figure. Yeah, he beheld a figure, terrible and awe-inspiring. It was the great dragon with wings stretching across the sky and light streaming in all directions from its body. Now, haven't we all been taught that's an evil thing, the dragon, right? Right? I was. Of course. Were you, Matt? All of them. Okay. Every, everything is, 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 it seems is a perversion of something that was good. Everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, this is like, keep in mind, this is one of the oldest extant writings from Hermes here, okay? So, this, so the idea that Manly got his hands on this is amazing. I want to go get the entire 17 fragments of the Pymander after seeing those. So, the great dragon called Hermes by name and asked him why he was meditating upon the worldly mystery. Terrified by the spectacle, Hermes prostrated himself for the dragon, beseeching it to reveal its identity. What are you? Are you dangerous? Can you squawk uh, IDD so I know if you're friend or foe, <laughs> right? It's exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the great creature answered that it was Poimanders, the mind of the universe. Really? Now you're probably asking yourself, well, which mind, the good one or the bad one, because you're scaring the hell out of me, right? Um, the creative intelligence and the absolute emperor of all. That's what he says. Wow. So um, this dialogue goes on for a while. I mean, just crazy cinematics, just like you saw in the Emerald Tablets, the smoke and the vapor and, and all the crazy stuff. And uh, finally, this dragon changed into another form and it said, his form was not revealed. I, thy God, and the light and the mind, which were before substance was divided from spirit of darkness and light. Wow. That's insane. Wow. So he's having a profound experience 
So just a little further than Gerald, uh, it, it continues on, um, and, and as Hermes is meditating and he's beholding this, this you know, this giant dragon of light in front of him, um, they, they continue on, they discuss further, and there's a couple really profound points I want to read, and the first one is on page 99. Okay. And, he, um, and, and Poimander says, learn deeply of the mind and its mystery, for therein lies the secrets of immortality. And you think about that, and if, like what Jay said at the very beginning of the show, uh, if this Ka energy, you know, Enlil, Jehovah, Abraham, controlling the illusion of, of physical matter, and all of the things that distract us, you know, obsessing with just keeping uh, us obsessing with the physical body and, and not caring at all about knowledge or, or, or about the spiritual self, that's the great distraction. You know, these things chasing our tail around with, with this right. matter. And so that in that sentence right that right there, that if, if you if you learn if you learn, learn deeply of the secrets of the mind, you will find immortality. And, and that's right there, it tells you that if you're able to find mind over matter, that every answer will unfold before you. The source of knowledge lies within. Yeah. Once you finish that reading the rest of it, where it says the then the Father Supreme. Yeah, and so then yeah, then I have I have the next part. So page on on page one one. This is probably the deepest part of that entire um, conversation with Poimander. The book, actually. Yeah, pr pr maybe besides this thing, well, pretty good too. <laughs> there's a um, couple of them in there, yeah, but it's profound. So Poimander says, um, then the Father Supreme Mind being light and life fashioned a glorious universal man in its own image not an earthly man but a heavenly man dwelling in the light of god so you 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 look you you look at that one sentence and it explains all of the problems we have of of not understanding that we're part of this one universal consciousness with the creator of all but not only that that we're actually created in the image of right. the creator of all we are little gods here we're children within gods god avatars who just have the amnesia of knowing that and, and they tell you right in front of you and mm -hmm. and you know the hardest thing for us is actually be able to be able to believe that because we constantly just get pulled back into this mm -hmm. illusion of physical matter of ka where we where we refuse to believe that 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 that, it, that mind over matter is king and we we just we just hold on to physical matter in the third dimension you know that great yeah. taking that red always staying in the red chakra and never ever leaving the physical the physical body that's what that represents in my mind yeah hey i'm going to jump over to page 104 the second paragraph down and i hope jay if you do have do you have your book with you i do not have it with me oh i was going to say i was i'd like to have you read some of this but this to me i was not going to include this much of it but i think this is probably some of the most profound part of this entire book and so I focused in okay. on this, and I think it'll weave in well with where we're going to go with the rest of this. So I, hadn't, I didn't give you this map that we were going to do this, but I'm going to do this, okay? So on page 104 of the second paragraph, uh, Poimander continues as he's telling Hermes all these different things about, the, he had just finished telling about the chakras and ascending the seven rungs of the ladder. He's talking about, you know, raising your consciousness. Well, right after that, he says, the path through immortality is hard, and only a few find it. So even though this Ba energy is put in us, if you don't awaken it, you may not go down this immoral, immortal path. So and, and, and Gerald, can I just jump in there really quick? Sure. Going along what you just said, you said you said uh, the path along the way is, is, is hard and many will fall. If we go back to the anonymous Enki message of all things, at the end of that message, I found a very striking thing you wrote where he said, there are many warriors among you and mo or most or many of them will fall. And it's, it's almost the same thing. Yeah. And it tells me that I think um, beings from all over the universe are all here, you know, learning in this teaching or prison planet. Then it, it goes to show you that, that they're being challenged by the very same things that are trying to deceive them. And then only those who are able to rise to the greatest heights will actually be able to break mm -hmm. out of Ka. And yeah. that those who... Even like listening right now, those who can listen to these these words, they, they're not necessarily they're not going to be able to find that unless they can experience and understand it for themselves. Mm -hmm. Because that path is so difficult 
that yeah. only through direct experience and learning from these lessons within can you actually break out. It's like well, and one, and, and one, and one other thing too, Matt, to add to that in, in, the, in the old immortal words of Manly Hall in the last book that we're going to talk about, I don't want to skip to it, but let's just stay right there because it's very poignant. And that is, as Gerald knows, it takes possibly thousands of lifetimes to apply those lessons and those learn. Because you keep forgetting every time. Yeah, that's, that's a hard pill to accept, but here, listen to this, see if we get some <laughs> yes. clarity. I got to do a thousand more of these again? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, so the path to immortality is hard and only a few find it. The rest await the great day when the wheels of the universe shall be stopped and the immortal sparks shall escape from the cheese of substance. There you go. Woe unto those who wait. They must return again, unconscious and unknowing. Yep. To the to the seed ground of stars and await a new beginning. Those who are saved by the light of the mystery, which I have revealed to you, O Hermes, and which I now bid you to establish among men. This is where the Great Commission comes in. Yep. Shall return again to the Father who dwelleth in the white light. So all of you that are talking about avoiding light at death because of this the psyop. It's a, it's a farce. Sorry. Go for the line. The trickery along the whole, the whole thing has been trickery. Yeah. And when we get to the next part with Satan, you'll learn that the trickery well, here, is... I got, I got some more. I, I got some more here. You're gonna, yeah. Let's finish this off. Go faster! Okay, I'll go faster. <laughs> okay. And shall deliver themselves up to the light, and shall be absorbed into the light. And in the light they shall become powers in God. This is the way of good, and is revealed only to them that have wisdom. Blessed yeah. are thou, O son of light, to whom all men, I, Poimanders, the light of the world, have revealed myself. Yeah. Okay, here comes the really great commission. I order you, go forth to become as a guide to those who wander in darkness, that all men within whom dwells the spirit of my mind, the universal mind, may be saved by my mind in you. That's awesome. The dweller within. Beautiful. Which shall cast forth my mind in them. Establish my mysteries, and they shall not fail from the earth. For I am the mind of the mysteries, and until mine fails, which is never, my mysteries cannot fail. Boom! That's incredible. So when you see that Thoth set up mystery schools, and Jesus did his teachings, and Confucius did, all these incarnations, from Hermes on, because of this encounter, and the affiliation with the dragon, okay, Remember, remember before he changed his symbol in my second book to an upside down star to go out with the up the right side of star for Isis. That was their symbol, but before that it was the goddess and the dragon. And this is why he affiliated himself with Poimander. And that's opinion, what they're called that's... hermetic writings, because they came from this inspiring moment with the great mind of the universe itself. Right, right. Yeah, so yeah. I know I went a little bit over on that one, and we got a lot to cover. And it's... No, it's awesome, though. Um, I mean, I, let me just say, make, let me make a point there. So Yeah, go how, ahead. I'm going to switch over to the next how, one. So how, how poetic, you know, impactful, resonant is it that there's the, you know, the creator of all himself, God, in his many manifestations, it telling us right there in the book that if you do not seek exactly right there snuffing out the picture of Hermes okay that dragon is not the one he's talking about this is That's a Python. land based Python. dragon that represents your skewed perception prism okay Python. yeah but, but 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 the reality is is like God is telling us that you can you're going to reincarnate over and over again until you choose to find the light that's within you, which is him, the light inside the indweller in me. That's it's exactly it. This is this is the this is what I saw because it coincided with the Emerald Tablet so closely. He told you you're born in this illusion of the Demiurgus of Ka, but I but in you is this mind of the great source of all, which is my job to wake up in you. That's really that's really profound. Oh, hey, just link it really quick to a great metaphor for this. The movie Groundhog Day. You have almost this idea of these lives over and over again with the same thing that's distracting <laughs> you. And you can't, you, yeah. you will relive the same nightmare until you can finally change. You become a good person. And all of a sudden, which, it, the nightmare no longer. Which movie was it? 
Which movie was it that the Tom Cruise was in where he was like a soldier and he kept coming back to the well, same um movie. Minority not Minority Report. That's it was exactly uh, it was the one it was two years ago. That movie Yeah, yeah, ago. but it was the same concept of you yes. keep coming back and trying to figure out where you are and preserve your conscience so you can go farther, right? So I thought that so anyway, that was really profound for me and established for me a vision of what the dragon symbology was all about. Uh that that clearly Hermes, Thoth, Quetzalcoatl adopted. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, let's move on to the next one. So in this this next uh, discussion from Manley B. Hall, which I think is fantastic, it's on page 407 for anybody who has them. Um, Adam, the Adam and Eve character, is having a discussion with the the character that we have been told biblically is Satan. Okay. And, and it's absolutely a fantastic read. And in essence, without reading all of it, and I think there's some of it we may want to read. Um, you've got listed down page 407, Matt. Yeah, you should start with I, the Serpent Answers, and read till the end of the I'm going to have you read it since I did the last one. I see where it is. Um, okay. So anyway, right. so Adam is having this conversation with this Satan being, and he's basically telling him, I've had enough of you. I followed your dictates. I, every time I asked to get higher, you rebuked me and sent me packing. And I'm just done with you. It's basically saying all the illusions, the lies, the destruction you've led me to, I'm through with you. Whoever you are, you know, I, and I followed you. I thought you were my God, but it clearly you weren't. So right after that point, uh, once this person, this Adam has broken his illusion of Ka, because that's really what he did when he reads that, says all this illusory stuff that you fooled me with, no more, no more. Right after that, this this, this uh, being that he's seeing, what he calls Satan, has a discussion with him. Matt, why don't you read that part, right, from a uh, Okay, so what we have to understand, this, this idea of the illusion of Ka and how uh, this demiurgist is protecting is protecting this this reality from being broken by remember by only those who who are able to achieve this this kind of hero path along the road because the road is hard and it's meant to be only succeeded by those who have the courage to travel it so mm -hmm. so within all of Adam's frustrations um, he's he's standing in front of Satan and this is what Satan says to him when he's right at his breaking point and this is what's so amazing about it that people have to kind of understand to not be so frustrated in life. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you, if we, you could do this paragraph and we could get some segments of the next one because it's very, very telling. The, these two conversations, the vision of Hermes and this one of the entire book, and then actually toward the end where he's, uh, where this professor shows up at the American flag and the signing of the Declaration of Independence, that's really good. Too. I love the professor for I really like it. Really like time for that. There's so much in this book. And they always say, you know, it's always darkest right before the dawn. So Adam in this is a metaphor. Is it, yeah, is, what timing right now for this, right? Given <laughs> so, so Adam is at his breaking point. No coincidences, point. He, Gerald. That's awesome. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, just like our species, right? They're at their breaking point. They just, they've done, they've been tricked by Ka for so long and they've done everything by the rules and they've been stepped on repeatedly and dragged through the mud. And so right at its breaking point, as a great metaphor, Adam is sitting there basically throwing up his arms in frustration for everything in reality that he's tried to achieve. And this is what, this is what the, uh, the, the great Satan says to him. I, the serpent answers, am Satan who was stoned. I am the adversary, the Lord who is against you. The one who pleads for your destruction before the eternal tribunal. I was your enemy upon the day that you were formed. I have led you into temptation. I have delivered you into the hands of evil. I have maligned you. I have striven ever to achieve your undoing. I am the guardian of the tree of knowledge, and I have sworn that none whom I can lead astray shall partake in its fruits. Woo! <laughs> so, right there, wow! There is, it, you gotta you gotta look at all of this and realize that this great hand that does not want us to to succeed the the one that wants us to die without ever achieving the light. Well, it's, I would take issue with that. Itself. I would take issue with that. I don't think this being I don't believe is the Demiurgus. This is different. This is the one that's guarding the. No, I don't. I think it's the think tree of knowledge. Of all who's protect. Well, yeah. who was who was guarding the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden? Enki. 
Okay. Oh, you mean Enlil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for, well, for the, I for personally, the... personally, I, I cannot distinguish whether this being, and we're going to go on with this here in just a second, whether this is because of the commission that was given to Thoth Hermes as the guardian of the Tree of Knowledge, or whether it was his father. But they've acted so much in concert, it's hard to distinguish them, really. So, well, well, when, when you when you agree that, that Enlil Yahweh is just an avatar for the creator of all anyway, to oh, fulfill... Oh, absolutely. He's just, playing, he's just playing the destruction. Yeah. But I don't think... So really, that's that's all they're doing is to well, just find... exactly. Well, he, he wasn't actually the guardian of the Tree of Knowledge. He appointed one, remember? The flaming sword. <laughs> anyway, so look, look at the second part of this. Adam replies, and after uh, he just to got told by his adversary, the one that's been tricking him and deceiving him all his life, he goes, for uncounted agents, I have been thy servant. In my ignorance, I listened to thy words, and they led me into paths of sorrow. Thou hast placed in my mind dreams of power. When I struggled to realize those dreams, they brought me to naught and pain. Thou hast sowed in me the seeds of desire, and when I lusted after the things of the flesh, agony was my only recompense. Thou hast sent me false prophets and false reasoning, and when I strove to grasp the magnitude of truth, I found, my, I found thy laws were false, and only dismay rewarded my strivings. Wow, he's trying, but he's getting cut off at every chance he's getting, right? Darkness thrown in his path. I am done with thee forever, O artful spirit. I have, tr I have tired of thy world of illusion. This is the illusion of God. No longer will I label in thy vineyards of iniquity. Get thee behind me, tempter, and the host of my temptations. There is no happiness, no peace, no good, no future in the doctrines of selfishness, hate, and passion yeah. preached by thee. Okay? And this is where it ought to make your head spin around when this being, Satan, reveals who he is to the Adam, okay? Matt, why don't you do that one, the very last part there. It is profound, and I promise we won't do too much more reading tonight, but these two... And, and this is what we have to understand, that if we're in the, in the if we're created in the image of the creator of all, then the path that we take would have to be the hardest path of all, because we have the potential to reach the highest state of evolution of any being in the universe, because we are the gods themselves. Yeah. And so let me read yeah, what, yeah. what this Satan reveals to Adam here. Behold, O Adam, the nature of thy adversary, the serpent disappears in a blinding sunburst of radiance, and in its place stands an angel, resendent in shining golden garments, with great scarlet wings that spread out from one corner of the heavens to the other. Dismayed and awestruck, the Adam falls before the divine creature. I am the Lord who is against thee, and thus accomplices thy salvation, continues the voice. Wow. Thou haste hatred me, but through the ages, yet to be thou shalt bless me. For I have led thee out of the sphere of the demiurges. Oh, there you go. See, that's that's how I'm telling you this is not the same as the demiurges. This is a this is a guardian of the tree of knowledge that can morph into any form is the bottom line here. That's why that's I think it's the crazy. creator of all. Yeah. That's crazy. Keep going. I have turned thee against the illusion of worldliness. I have weaned thee of desire. I have awakened in thy soul the immortality of which I, my, I myself partake. Follow me, O Adam, for I am the way, the life, and the truth. Wow. <laughs> wow. What are your thoughts, Jay, on that? I mean, it's absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, I, I, how about the thought, how about them them because it's flip-flopping because we have no idea who it may or well, may not be. This concept of the deceiver <laughs> also being the initiator yes. in the tree of knowledge, that's the part that, now put yourself in Enlil's role in seeing that this being was commissioned to play that role, whether it was, yeah. an Enki, whether it was Enki or his son Paul. I believe it's, I believe the toy mander is actually Osiris Enki. And this Thank guardian you, yeah. of the tree of knowledge that shows the twin serpents going up, wrapped around a tree in this instance, wow. was an inst was an incarnation of Thoth operating on behalf of the demo of the Poimander, just like he said. So that to me is just and also the way the truth of life, where have you heard those words before in the New Testament? 
from Jesus. And, and, I, and I see Enki yeah. as being, he, he's the guardian of reality in this planet. He, he's doing the work of the creator of all to protect, to only allow those of the initiative to get through because because that that's the only construct that can work for something that could be as powerful as we are. The path of illumination is hard, yeah. but I, that, that also, also what he said in there about how through the ages, so they're there, it's just like Gerald says, they're there. Every step of the way, yeah, every, every step, step of the way, of yeah. every single new new Atlantis, every single country, every single birth of a nation, there they are. Now, now you're seeing things at this at the level that I look at them because I don't go, well, well this civilization is going to be <laughs> really fantastic because they believe this and they have this leader or this one or that one. This has been going on for a long time, and I think all of these together are for us to see all the influences that this. Satan being is done to show you here's the here's how a good civilization will look in Atlantis. Here's how one will look under communist Stalinism, okay? And here's how it looks in North Korea or India or Pakistan, wherever. And so for us to have an internet age where we can start comparing and contrasting all these different models and then see how we've been led astray, he's right. He's like, you have to be led astray and drugged through the dirt multiple times or you won't get out of this illusion of calm. Like we, we're just we're just hard headed. We don't we don't learn unless we get physical somatic input, right? <laughs> Through our five senses. Well, but, but but then we learn, right? But then we die. <laughs> well, that's the thing. That's the thing. If you if you had a very long lifestyle span, you know, this this begs the question, would the work expand to fill the time that you have? In other words, you if you lived eight hundred years and you knew that you didn't have to come to this knowledge until and it, there was this was the difference between you graduating out of the uh, holographic simulator slave planet or not would you do it right away or would you wait till right toward the end you know this is the exactly so right. that's yeah, a great so question. I, okay so uh what do you think what do you guys think about this symbolism of the dragon and the poimander why did he choose that symbol and then in this adam and satan you realize when he shows up as an avatar uh, the snake is wrapped around a tree, right, in this Adam and Satan. Right. So he takes on this symbol of a snake wrapped around something, okay, like Caduceus wrapped around the pole. And Enki had these two. And actually, you go back to the Tree of Knowledge in the Mesopotamia, they had the twin serpents going up guarding the Tree of Knowledge, right? So the idea of protecting, protecting higher knowledge goes all the way back to this concept of the war of consciousness for our primitive workers, right? And this was the where the Demiurgus and, and Enki, his brother, Enlil, the Enlil and, Enkel, en, Enlil and Enki, were basically tweaking the simulator based on how much consciousness we're allowed to have, and probably the cycle master's timing for when we're allowed to have it in this dimension. Right. Imagine you accelerate somebody beyond where they're supposed to be in their dimensional reality. Well, you've just messed up the whole basis for the school, right? So, so Gerald, so Gerald, that brings up a really interesting question right there, and it's kind of off topic, but I want to ask it. So, if they were tweaking, both of us were tweaking us, and they had to get the approval of the cycle masters. What do you think was the most advanced form of us before they downgraded us and clamped us to be 120? Right, because we know Moses lived, Zarathustra lived till he's eight or nine hundred years, and Jacob and all those guys. So, yeah. who was? What was the ultimate quote unquote sapiens version? before they clamped us. What do you think that who that was? Was that just Moses? Noah? Noah was represented it, right? Well, going back farther than that, <clears throat> and actually we're gonna get into that in the Lost Teachings of Atlanta. So I want you to, want you to, once you narrate this one, uh, Jay, since you're so familiar with it, I am too, but I want you to get a chance because you're leading right into the question that we're gonna yeah. talk about in terms of, you know, at what point did we lose our contact, our full <laughs> contact with the divine source, such that we ended up in avatar bodies and were disconnected from that source. There was some process there that happened, right? So we're gonna, I think we'll talk about that. So jumping over to page 76 on the Lost Teachings of Atlantis. And this is the book by um, John Peniel. And I know it's- Fascinating been, book, by the way. After, Everybody, yeah, it's a different- this book. This, you know, this one, this one, actually I was resistant because it was coming through the lessons of a master and a student yeah, that have direct, di uh, texts like the Emerald Tablets or these others. Right. But with that said, they do a fantastic job on the history of Atlantis. It's profound. I wanted to share uh, one thing on page 76 that really kind of struck me because the Emerald Tablets got, came under assault by lots of people who said, oh, those aren't real, blah, blah, blah. They were all made up by Doreal. 
Well, listen, listen, listen to this as the master Zane of this, uh, I know, Atlantean monastery. What else would you call it, Jay, that, that they set up? They were perpetuating the teachings of Atlantis in these monasteries. Yeah, it's the Atlantean monastery. Okay. Led by the great being who came, became known as the Atlantean Amaleus. This is a new name I hadn't even gotten for him before. Then known later as Thoth and eventually well known as Jesus much later. Yeah. Okay, so well, this, this master teacher, Zane, this isn't me saying this, he wrote this, okay, on page 76, reconfirms what we've been seeing all along is that when Thoth took on that great commission from Koi Mander and was told to go establish my mysteries, that's a mystery school, right? Okay, there's a direct connection there with his mystery schools in the land of Kem that he set up. So he talks about a lot of that history in uh, the Lost Teaching of Atlantis that also ties Thoth in who titled and stated in the documents that I thought the Atlantean wrote this document, okay? And <laughs> later on, we see that her, uh, several Manito and a couple of the other Egyptian priests said that this guy, I think Herodotus too, said yeah, Hermes yeah, Thoth her. had written over 35,000 works uh, in some total. We don't know what how many lifestyle times that was over, but they were all attributed to him. So that is fascinating. Ger Gerald Plato, Plato mentioned it too. Plato mentioned it in the Critias too. Right. And how many of those hermetic teachings were burned, destroyed, and will never be able to read them? That's the well, sad. you know what, Matt? I actually, I don't know. I think that's the story. I think that's the illusion. I think that a lot of that stuff I've read is Gerald. Well, Gerald, what was the book that told us that they saved a lot of the documents from uh, Alexandria? That it was actually a cover up to tell us to keep people like thought that it was all gone, but they actually saved a lot. What was the book you and I read recently? I can't oh. remember. Is it in? I think, Hall? Hall. I think it was in Manly P. Hall. I think it was in Manly P. Hall. Yeah, it's Manly Hall. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the books, a lot of the stuff was saved, but they were obviously scurried out in the cover of darkness under, you know, yeah. probably the Roman regions, and then they were hit away. I think they were hit away, Gerald, correct me if I'm wrong, somewhere in Italy. I'm not I sure. I can't remember where. I don't know. My, I, mind, I, my I, mind is kind of on, on this, <laughs> this segment right yeah, now before no, I, I forget it. But uh, I wanted to share a little bit off of page 83 with you that uh, tied together a lot of things for you. From number one, we heard that Doriel was part of this great white brotherhood. And we knew that the white brotherhood was the Egyptian therapeutate, the priests that yeah. were serving Thoth, the Atlantean, okay, who landed over there. So listen to this, this is coming from Zane as well. Uh, some in the new lands were called the children of the one gods or the great light brotherhood or great white brotherhood. Others became known as the Magi, magicians and alchemists. Okay, and then later on down, it says a branch of the Magi formed communities around the fifth century BC, eventually become known as the Essenes. This, this is where my mind started tripping on this, okay? The purpose of this community was specific, to live a strict spiritual life, as pure and disciplined as possible, in order to provide the ultimate physical vehicles, avatar bodies, okay? Yep for the final incarnation of the being that was Master Thoth and his soulmates. Wow! You gotta be kidding me. So they're, they're grooming avatars for a future time so that they can incarnate in them and do their Atlantean mission. 